In this video, I'm going to review perfect substitutes in production. Let's take a production function of the following form. And this production function of this form here will give rise to perfect substitutes. So a few things about this production function. Uh, first, a, the coefficient in front of k, which is units of capital, is equal to the marginal product of capital, MPK. B is the marginal product of labor, and I'll just abbreviate it, MPL. And maybe I should write over here, K is just units of capital. L equals units of labor, and Q represents units of output. So the firm is interested in producing a certain amount of output, and they can achieve that output by using combinations of K and L, units of capital and units of labor. And as I was saying here, A will always be the marginal product of capital. Whatever this value is here, 2, 5, 10, 20, that will represent the marginal product of capital. And the number in front of labor, units of labor, the variable labor, will represent the marginal product of, la uh, will represent the marginal product of labor. Uh, more sophisticatedly, we could write something like this. If we were to take the partial derivative of the production function, with respect to capital, you just get back A, which once again is just the marginal product of capital. And the marginal product of capital is just the increase in output from using one more unit of capital. So again, A will represent the marginal product of capital. That is the increase in output the firm gets from using one more piece of capital, one more piece of machinery, for example and it's just a partial derivative concept. And if we take the partial derivative of the output uh, function, this production function with respect to labor, we once again get back B, which is a marginal product of labor. And the marginal product of labor tells us how much more output the firm will get from hiring one more worker. And technically holding the other input constant. So if we were to hire one more unit of labor, output would go up by some amount, whatever this value B is here, and that would be the marginal product of labor. Okay, let me move down here, or clear this. Now generally what we're interested in a lot of times with these problems is finding the optimal input mix. How many units of capital or labor should we use? to produce a given amount of output at the lowest possible cost. So here's a basic rule of thumb. We're going to use only units of capital, only K, if the following condition holds. The marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital is greater than the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor. So once again, the basic rule of thumb is we're going to only use units of capital if the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital exceeds the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor. Uh, this term on the left hand side, this thing right here, is just telling us, <coughs> excuse me, it's just telling us the additional output resulting from spending one more dollar on capital. This is a bang for the buck measurement. Again, this is the additional output this firm gets from spending one more dollar on capital. If that exceeds the additional output we get from spending one more dollar on labor, then by all means we should be using the input that gives us more output per dollar, in this case, capital. And this just, uh, the, the mere image of this is using only units of labor, use only L if 
the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor exceeds the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital. And I'll go through an example in a minute here using some actual numbers. Okay, um, so maybe we'll get into, let's get into that example now. You're given a production function of the following form. Output equals 50 times units of capital, K, plus 10 times units of labor. Once again, K is units of capital. These are physical units. L is units of labor. The price of labor, call it W, equals $10. And the price of capital, call it R, is $40. Every time we hire a worker, we have to pay that worker $10. Anytime we were to use one more unit of cap or machinery, the firm would have to pay $40 per unit. So given this production function, from what we learned, the marginal product of capital is just going to be this coefficient in front of the K term, or 50. The way we're going to interpret that is every time we were to use one more unit of capital, holding labor fixed, the firm's output would go up by 50 units. The marginal product of labor, the increase in output from hiring one more worker, is going to be 10. Every time we hire one more unit of labor, output goes up by 10 units, holding capital fixed. So we got that. So maybe we're interested in finding how many units of labor, how many units of capital we should use if the firm wants to produce 200 units of output. So for example, you could have a question worded something like this. If the firm wants to produce 200 units of output, the profit maximizing output level for the firm, what is the optimal input mix? How many units of capital or how many units of labor should the firm use to produce that 200 units of output? at the lowest possible cost. Well, to do this, we are going to calculate the marginal product of capital and divide by the price of capital. And then we're going to compare that result with the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor. Which input gives us more value for our money? The marginal product of capital is 50 divided by the price of capital, uh, we said was $40 up here. So that's just 1.25, which means that output will expand by 1.25 units if we were to spend one more dollar on capital, a bank for the buck measurement. The marginal product of labor is 10. We divide by the price of labor, $10 or the wage, equals 1. In this case, our last dollar spent on labor increases output by only one unit. So it's clear then that we're getting more output per dollar by spending money on capital, by spending our money on capital than spending it on labor. So in this case, we want to use only capital. We want to use all capital in this example to produce our 200 units of output. That will be what's cost minimizing. So how do we figure out how many units of capital exactly to hire? Well, let me just rewrite the production function. We want to produce 200 units of output. That was given to us, so we're going to just set Q, units of output equal to 200. We then said we're not going to use any labor because we're always getting more output per dollar from capital than we are labor. So I'm going to zero out labor. L is just zero. We're not going to use any labor. So now we just have 200 equals 50 times K 
we solve this k equals 4. Okay, once again L equals 0 and that will be our optimal input mix. Using 4 units of capital produces 200 units of output at the lowest possible cost. You might ask, well what is that cost? Total cost is just going to be the price of capital times the units of capital or K $40 times 4 $160. It is not possible to produce 200 units of output at a cost less than $160. This is the best that the firm can do. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.